Hello lovelies! If you are seeing this, you are catching the replay, so drop a replay in the comments for me. Welcome, welcome, welcome into my world today on this beautiful Thursday. I have, have this that I would like to speak to you about, and I'm curious, very, very curious, if you either have noticed this also, or if maybe you come back to me in a year or six months and you're like, oh, you were right, it worked. So I love it when clients come back and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, like maybe I haven't worked with them in a year, maybe I haven't worked with them in six months or something like that, but they still get, jump in my inbox and they're like, oh, so that thing you taught me last summer in La Femme, it still applies now. Or that thing I learned in Lunar U, wow, it's working. And so even if it's like in six months or a year that you come back and you're like, yes, this is working, let me know, okay? So I've been noticing this phenomenon in the last couple of months, and I've seen it more than one place, but I'm going to focus very specifically on one area of my life that I have watched it happen. But I'm also watching it happen in other areas. Ooh, it's 3.33. <gasps> And so last year, I was in a mastermind with two incredible different coaches. And one of them very specifically was a mindset coach. And I have learned a lot in 10 years about clutter. And in 2015... Uh, the end of 2015, so like the week between Christmas and New Year's when everybody's like, ah, let's look at the new year. Um, I found the journal from that actually in the last week or something like that. And the mantras that I have written at the very, very, very beginning of it, like the, ooh, this is what you see on the very first page when you open this up for, and it was like setting myself up for the year of like, these are the the cleaning schedule that we're going to have. This is the activity schedule. This is what I feel like my five-year-old or whatever it was at the time should be learning. Hi, Kristen. Oh my gosh. Hello, babe. At this point. And so like all of these different things were in this three ring binder for the coming 2016. Like we've all done this, right? We've all planned our year in that week. Hi, Anna. Hello. We've all planned our year in that week between Christmas and New Year's. And so I found this one from the very, very end of 2015 last year. And like the big, broad letters up at the top was less stuff, less mess, less stress. Like, okay. And so this had begun probably prior to that even, but I was seeing, you know, this physical evidence of 2016, the goal was less stuff because stuff was stressful. And now what you need to understand is that in May, I guess back a little bit, what you need to know about me is that in May of 2016, I delivered a 24 week stillbirth. I believe he was gone at about eight, 18 weeks, but I delivered at 24 weeks. And so that was May 7th, 2015. And for, yes, Kristen, shout that. And so for that whole summer, it was a lot of grief. It was a lot of depression, to be painfully honest. It was a lot of emotions, like big, big emotions that I did not have the skill set to navigate. Like just period, point blank, I did not have the skill set to navigate it. And then... August, middle of August, actually about this time, about the time he was due, would have been due, we got pregnant again, not intentionally because I knew I needed more space to heal and, but that's how it happened. And so I was like, okay. And hormone, pregnancy hormones were my happy place. Like physically at the end of it, like you may not be feeling that great, but pregnancy hormones were actually a really, really happy place for myself. And now that I'm, you know, the cycle thinking coach and I understand how hormones work, it makes a ton of sense to me why that is, but that's not this class. <laughs> and so 
I was pregnant for 10 weeks and then we lost that baby in October of 2015 also. So this is like the setting of making, oh Kristen, <laughs> of making my intentions, setting my intentions for 2016 between Christmas and New Year's 2015. Like less stuff, less stress, less mess. Okay, well, if you reflect on this year, you lost two babies, Sarah. Like, basically it can go up from here, right? So even if there's not less stuff in 2016, surely there will be less stress. And there may or may not be less mess, but surely there will be less stress. Like, hindsight 2020, right? And so I'm flipping through this journal and I can see the course of the last seven years, six and a half, um, and I'm looking at it the other day and I'm like, you know, that really was the onset of like this huge decluttering journey. Like since then I have read Marie Kondo, since then I have watched the YouTube videos, since then I have done all of these different things in an effort to declutter our home. And we live in a like 11,000 square foot house and we now have six people in it. And 2016, we only had four people in it, but you know, even so. And so like I would do, I think it was 2018, again, January, right? Don't we always start everything in January? <laughs> not the cycle syncing coach, not anymore. There's a time to start stuff and it happens all the time. <laughs> but so 2018, I had done like the thousand things for January or something like that. And I kept track. I was like, okay, we got rid of this thing and we got rid of this thing and we got rid of this thing and we got rid of this thing because I wanted the satisfaction of knowing that a thousand things had left our house. Honestly, I'm sure that I hit it. I quit writing them all down because I was like, this is a waste of time. I'll just get rid of the stuff. <laughs> and so I got rid of a lot of stuff in 2018 and yet I'm looking around. I'm like, there's still freaking stuff everywhere. And so last year, when I was in this amazing mastermind with two incredible coaches, one of them being a mindset coach, and I made a post about this about last year when this happened, and people were like, like, it had like 50 comments on it, huge amounts of reactions, like, it resonated with people. So hopefully this does too. I'm talking to the mindset coach, and I'm like, okay, things that I have learned, and maybe you have learned this too, let me know if you have learned this also that our physical surroundings are a reflection of like our mental space. And so if you want to have clearer thinking, if you want to sleep better, if you want to be less overwhelmed or less stressed, like what I wrote at the end of 2015, if you want these things, then if you clear up your physical surroundings, your brain will have less clutter inside of it. Yes. Kristen says, yes, yes, yes. This is resonating. It makes so much sense. And so from that place is a lot of where for sure 2018, I don't know about 2016 so much, but for sure 2018 and beyond, that is where a lot of my desire to get rid of things came from and have less things in our home. That's where a lot of that came from was I don't want the, the overwhelm here anymore. I do not want the, the stress. I don't want to feel like this any longer. I want clear clarity, peace. I want my home to be just this ha absolute haven. And so that is the spirit in which that I did a lot of the decluttering, at least for sure from 2018 forward. And so I'm talking to this mindset coach last year and I'm like, it's still a mess. Like, I'm doing my best, and yet it's still a mess. And she's like, Sarah, what? And this was just mind-boggling to me. This, there are not words for this when it actually landed with me. So throw me some lightning bolts if this hits you in just like this kind of way. And it says, ugh, I'm always removing stuff because 680 square feet for six people. Yes. It always seems like we have a ton of things. I'm always stressed by it. Girl, you are in the right live. <laughs> Kristen says, we just moved into our new home. We are not allowing stuff. Not joking. Oh, I love it. Hi, Holly. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Kyria. 
And so when I sat down with the mindset coach last year, I was like, all right, it is just a freaking mess. I want the clarity. I want the peace here. And so I have been striving, note that word, striving to get rid of the stuff out there so that this can feel more clear and peaceful. And she asked me this question. She says, Sarah, what's the benefit of a mess? Huh? What is the benefit of a messy house? This is a trick question. No. What is the benefit of a messy house? And so like really, really, really old programming took over in that moment. I was like, okay, I have a house. Are you telling me to be in gratitude for the fact that I have a house? I have a house. I have a roof that does not leak. I have children that have toys. I have children that have books. I have children that have clothes and all of these things get left all over the house and therefore I have a mess. Are you wanting me to be in gratitude for all of these wonderful things in my life that comes with all this extra crap? Is that the point of this conversation right now? No. Okay, I give up. <laughs> tell me. Mindset coach. Guru, tell me. What is the benefit of the messy house? Kristen says there is no benefit, right? That's exactly where I was at. <laughs> Curious says the messy house is, is a convenient excuse for... <laughs> okay, her answer, guys, and this was pure gold. <clears throat> Absolute gold. The benefit of the messy house was that I took time to rest. Did you sit and snuggle a baby today, Sarah? Yeah. You could have been cleaning. You could have been folding the pile of laundry. You could have been decreasing the pile of laundry by 50%, but instead you chose to sit and rest. Did you watch a movie or read a book last night? Yeah, actually I did. Okay, well you could have been doing whatever it was to remove a whole bunch of stuff from your house, or you could have enjoyed the fact that you worked all day doing whatever it was that you worked all day. It may have been wiping butts all day. It may have been cleaning puke all day but you got to rest last night instead of continuing to hustle and wear yourself out getting rid of the stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, Kristen, plot twist. And so it was just this huge shift of like, okay, yeah, I would rather sit and enjoy a book or I would rather sit and write on one of my novels of an evening than continue to try and like tornado through the house and get everything picked up so that in the morning my kids can have it be, you know, a mess again by the time I get up at 6.30. I think I'll sit down and I'll write my novel. <laughs> that sounds like a whole lot more fun. And so it was definitely a paradigm shift of like, okay, so you have this house, you have this stuff. You have six people that live in this house and they all have their own stuff. And so what is the pieces that you can control in the moment? And it's, do you want to be harried by the fact that you can't seem to ever get rid of enough of the stuff? Or do you want to give yourself the space and the rest that your body is craving and just know that, you know, it'll still be there. And it was such an incredible relief to me. Excuse me. I had a coach earlier this year. She said, when you, um, when you burp, energy is moving. So we're moving energy. And so, um, that was the, this just phenomenal piece for me. Like it was absolutely world changing a year ago. And now, and so part of that led to more time to work on me led to more time to do the healing that I knew that needed to happen. And so when I started, like I've been in personal development for eight, nine, 10 years, something like that. But 
daily, 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 daily with someone who resonates with me for two years now. And as a direct result of that, the amount of healing that has happened in my body is freaking phenomenal. And it hasn't, I can't say, you know, work with this person and this person only for all of the healing that you could possibly want. It doesn't, it's not that way. There's 20 people that I could refer you to and be like, go listen to this person, go listen to this person, go listen to this person, go listen to this person. And, you know, if you do what they say, you will have healing come. But it's the constant choice of choosing me. The constant choice of what does it look like to give me exactly what I need in this moment? Is it taking a nap? Take a nap. And it and and having it be okay. And as I have leaned into this, and it's a faith thing. Like it takes faith, it takes trust to see the basket of laundry that should be folded and instead say, you know what, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to bed. It takes faith to see the stack of dishes in the sink because you cooked from scratch for your family because you love them in that fashion and say, you know what, I'm at a point in my cycle where I need more self-care than normal and I'm going to go take an Epsom salt bath and the dishes will be there and they'll get done when the dishes get done. Like they're not going anywhere. But this space right now where the kids are asleep and I could actually take myself to an Epsom salt bath is now. I can do the dishes at six in the morning when they're up, but the space for that bath, it's now, it's not doing the dishes. The more that I have done that, the more that I have said, okay, this is heavy, but I'm going to journal through this so that I can get to the root of it. Now, the more of all of these integral pieces that I have done, the more healing I have wrought in my body. And something that is just freaking amazing to me that has happened this year, actually just in the last three months, yeah, three, four months, like think Mother's Day-ish. So last three-ish months, the stuff is leaving. Like there is so much less stuff in my house and it has been effortless. Like there has been no... Okay, Monday we are decluttering, blah, 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 blah. It just happened. Like, it happened today again. It happened today again. So I'm someone who's like, if you haven't used it in 24 months, go ahead and get rid of it. And I only say that because I'm someone who likes to can, and I only use some of my canning equipment once a year, and maybe once every two years. Depends on what I'm canning that year. So that's why I say 24 months. If you don't have something very, very seasonal like that that you use very rarely, every 12 months. Well, something that I should have probably gotten rid of years and years and years ago because I have never made a rotisserie chicken in my um, toaster oven is the rotisserie piece for the chicken for the toaster oven. But because I still used and had the toaster oven, I have kept the rotisserie piece for the chicken for the toaster oven. And so today I am digging through drawers because I actually want to make that a rotisserie chicken. We just got some amazing... oh. Um, like free range, amazing chickens from my bestie and they have been sitting in the freezer and I'm like, I think we'll do it rotisserie instead of instant pot, which is what I usually do because I want that, I want that crunch on the outside. I want the crisp on the outside. And so I'm like, oh, I have the ability to do that in my toaster oven. That's exciting. Boy, I hope I didn't get rid of the, the piece that, that, that the chicken goes on so that it can turn around so that it can get roasted. Hmm. I wonder where that is. And so I went digging through my drawers and my cupboards earlier today, and I found the the pieces that I needed eventually. But first, I went through the wrong drawer, which happens to be a drawer that needed clean. So I cleaned the drawer, and I found stuff that I didn't know that I had, like oven mitts that I don't even recognize. Like, I have had the same two black oven mitts since I got married 13 years ago. Where did this blue checkered one come from? You can go and you can go. Oh, and you dish towel that has a hole in it. You can go and you dish towel that has a hole in it. You can go. Oh, and that one too. Like half the drawer is in the trash <laughs> because I haven't used it in that long or it had a hole in it or, or what have you. And so I got rid of some stuff today without intending to, and it keeps happening like that. It's not 
Okay, today I will declutter the kitchen and we will make sure that there is less stuff in the kitchen. No, it was... I wonder where that thing is. Oh, I don't need any of this. And it keeps happening. And it's been happening all summer long since like May. And it's freaking amazing. And what I genuinely believe it is... And so at the beginning of this, I mentioned that it's kind of a well-known thing that if you have clutter in your space, then your mind is cluttered. That you're on high alert. That your your um, your nervous system is not overly happy if you're surrounded by clutter because your mind is cluttered. Your mind is overwhelmed. Your brain is like, Argh. and so five years ago, my goal was to declutter so that my brain was not going. Argh. But how this is actually physically manifesting and sticking, this is the thing. I've gotten rid of stuff my entire existence in this house on a regular basis, but it didn't stick. The thing that is making it stick is the fact that it's not going from the outside in, but it's starting on the inside and spreading out. So as I do the healing work, as I take the Epsom salt bath, as I say, the dishes will be there later, I'm healing here. As I do the motherhood work, as I journal through the thing that hurts really freaking bad, but I know on the other side it's going to be better, as I show up with the coach who asks me questions that I don't want to look at, inside starts to heal and the brain starts to be more clear and the overwhelm evaporates and now I have been doing it consistently enough for two years straight non-stop daily listening to something that the clutter I was striving to get rid of has just kind of gone away and it's the most beautiful, the most incredible, the most miraculous thing in the world. Something that I had strove for. I, I mentioned striving at the beginning. Something that I would just push and push and try and make happen and try and force to make happen. And we'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of that. And we'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of that. Never stuck. It never worked. The peaceful home did not come until the inner work was done. We do this across all areas of our lives. We get into our masculine, our doing, our this is the way it's going to be and by golly if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. Energy. And we force. And the force wears us out. The force makes us tired. The force is utterly exhausting. And the results, they suck, quite frankly. When you do anything from a place of force and push and strive and you don't pair it with the feminine of the bee and the rest and the trust and the faith, and the lean back, you will never get the results that you desire in the masculine. You will just find yourself frustrated and striving. You are created in the image of the creator. The creator, if you look in creation, if you've been in any of my free master classes, this is going to make so much sense to you. Creation is a unique and beautiful marrying of masculine and feminine energy. We have the sun every 24 hours and we have the moon that walks through a 28 day cycle. We have summer in opposition to winter and it's not opposition. It's that summer doesn't work without winter. You can't harvest if you don't plant in the spring. You can't harvest in the fall if you don't plant in the spring. And so if you are striving 
in your masculine trying to force an outcome and there's no rest, there's no lean back and just let it come, you will be frustrated. And if what I'm saying is like, what? what? I don't get it. You're not alone. You're not alone. And I can tell you this and I can teach this with you and you can jump on one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me and we can work through it and it will exponentially bring that outcome to you. But until you start to actually experience it, it's not going to logically make a whole lot of sense to you, I promise. So you're just going to have to trust me that the next time you're staring at a mountain of dishes and you're like, I'd really like a bath while everyone's asleep. Go take the bath. The dishes will be there. The next time you're looking at this huge mess somewhere in your home and you're like, Ugh, I just wish it would go away. Flip it. And look for the wound that's maybe begging you to journal through and heal. Is this resonating still? Or maybe my comments quit working. I don't know. This is just in the area of clutter, but I've seen it happening in other areas. Things that five, eight, ten years ago I was striving for, I was pushing for, I wanted this thing, I want it now. It has started to manifest this year, and it's from such a place of ease and flow and effortlessness that it, it just, it's just like, it's, it's, there aren't words. Like, I've got chills down my arms. The, th the feeling of it, the energy of it is amazing. Anna says it's resonating, but I have some trauma. I don't know how to journal through and heal. Oh, baby girl. And, and that is at the root of it. Like, when we do have trauma, it manifests externally around us all of the time. It manifests in our businesses. It manifests in our relationships. It manifests in our stuff. Like, it's just the way that it is. And so, keep... Keep asking questions, dear. Keep watching. Keep learning where you can. And I get, I, I, this is why I have offers across the board. This is why I show up and I do free content like this. Because I know that there was a time in my life where free content was all that I could use. It's all I could access. And I was so thankful for the free content at the time. And so this is also why I have the Infinity Cup here. Or one of the reasons why I have the Infinity Cup here. So I have done a live video every single day this week, starting on Sunday. And when you share any of my live videos on my personal timeline and you share them publicly and you drop shared in the comments, so then I know you shared it, your name goes into the Infinity Cup. And once a month, I draw a name out of the Infinity Cup. And sometimes you get, you know, a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one call with me and we can dig into some of that trauma that Anna's talking about that she doesn't know how to journal through and heal. Sometimes you get 111 coaching dollars to apply to any of my offers. And so if this resonates with you, I ask that you would share it because you never know who else it's going to resonate with. Like, please do share this content. And if this is your first time seeing me, I'm Sarah Jordan. And I help women with things like trauma healing through cycles. So bleeding or not, you do have a cycle, beautiful woman. And I help you use it for your healing. I help you use it for your wellness. I help you use it for your business. I help you use it for your homeschooling. I help you use it for your relationships. I help you use it for your communication. And it's so amazing, the transformations that I get to be a witness to. Like, it, it, it's amazing. And for those of you that have trusted me with some of your transformations, like, I am so honored. Thank you so much. And I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope that you can begin to see that maybe the clutter on the outside is not actually your inability to be a good housekeeper or to clean or anything like that, but that maybe it's just an external manifestation of something inside that is just aching, aching for you to give it some love. And I do just really quickly want to say that like, there's a difference between dirty and, and a mess that's clutter-based or a mess that's just a lot of people in a small space. The big difference between dirty and that. Big difference. 
And so if, if you feel complete and you're like, thank you, Sarah, this was amazing. Thank you for showing up for free like this in this capacity and, and you're complete. I'm going to share a couple of different ways that you can continue to work with me. And if you don't want to stay, that's totally okay. But I do want to share a couple of ways that you can continue this conversation with me if you so desire. I have until the end of August, I am actually giving a special, the August special, on my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it's about $2,000 per month to work with me one-on-one -on -one, and you get a, a 60 minutes with me every single week when we work in a one-on-one -on -one capacity. And if you have ever worked with me one-on-one, -on -one, I would love it if you would like say something about it in the comments if you have something to say. But for the rest of the month of August, I have my three-month package, coaching package one-on-one -on -one, and my six-month coaching package one-on-one -on -one at $1,111 per month instead of 2000 Hi, Lisa. Oh my gosh. Hi, babe. So good to see you. So instead of 2 k per month, it is $1,111 per month uh, if you pay in full. So like for the three months, it would be three, 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 three. And the six months, you can do the math. If you wanted to do monthly payments, oh my gosh, thank you, Lisa. If you wanted to do monthly payments, it's 1222 per month. Again, you can do the math, but I just wanted to give that offer to you because I understand that if you're in that place that I was 2015, 2018, like it's pretty intimate. It's not something that you really want to just put in the comments section on a free video on Sarah Jordan's personal Facebook page, right, Anna? Like, you know, you have some wound healing to do, but that's not really something you just want to like. Hey, what about this in a public capacity? I totally understand that trauma healing, especially is very, very intimate. Any healing is very, very intimate. And so this is why I want to put out there the offer of some one-on-one -on -one coaching packages with myself so that you can have that one-on-one -on -one space. You can have someone there that can hold space. I am a trauma informed coach. And so I can hold that space for you and we can start to dig in and do some of that healing. Um, and then the incredible outcome of like, wow, this thing that I have been striving for, for five, six, eight years, just manifested in my house. And it's like effortless. It just happened. It just, it's done. And I don't even remember like putting forth effort and energy into it. And yet it's done just like the drawer that just happened today. Like half of the thing just walked itself out the door into the trash today with zero effort. That is such an amazing feeling. And the thing about it is, is that that's like, that's the physical in your home piece. But oh my gosh, when that starts to happen in your relationships, when that starts to happen with your kids, when you pass that on generationally to your children, like, wow, when that starts to happen in your money life, When money starts to come in effortlessly because you chose to step up to the plate and do the inner healing work for yourself, like it's all connected and it's so freaking phenomenal. So if you would like to take advantage of either that three month package or that six month one-on-one -on -one package, just jump in messenger and I will get you whichever link it is that you desire. And I cannot wait to see who's going to grab those. But like I said, I, I started, I cut my teeth, I cut my teeth on free content. So please do share this because someone else may need the free content in this moment. And you get in the infinity cup if you drop share it in the comments. If you don't want in the infinity cup, that's totally okay too. But if you feel aligned to share it, I would so appreciate that. Okay, I love you lovelies and I will see you tomorrow.